everyone, it's Miriam with a Y. Last week, we made a simple three-color Petri, and we made it pretty thin, too. Let's go a little further this week, add more colors, some shimmer, and introduce a fun 3D snake-like element, too. I'll use pinata colors for this piece, pink, Baja blue, and golden yellow again, because they're so pretty. But we'll add lime green, blue violet, and for some extra fun, we'll throw in some pearl too. And of course, we'll need Blanco Blanco. My resin of choice is Clearcast 7050, and we won't work too thick in this piece either. Some effects are totally achievable while still working thin, so I want to cover those first to get you comfortable playing with resin and inks if you're just starting. In this cup, I have about 25 milliliters of resin that's been mixed and has been sitting for about half an hour. I want an older resin because I want it to be a little thicker than the resin that I'm going to pour into the mold and you'll see why a bit later. For this new resin, I've just finished mixing up 45 milliliters of resin, and I'm pouring it in immediately. I'll let it sit in the mold for a couple of minutes to let the majority of bubbles rise so that they're easier to pop with a torch. Okay, now let's go nuts with color. Don't be afraid here, put a lot down. You'll even see me put white down first in some spots, and then I'll cover all the color with the white. As long as I don't overdo it with too many layers of white, I'll be fine, meaning I won't go crashing through to the bottom of the Petri. My goal here is to completely fill the surface with ink. I'm not interested in negative space this time, but if you'd like some, it's okay to have that. It's not gonna be a problem, it's just that since I did that last week, this week I'm not. The one thing I'm being a little careful about is keeping colors that don't mix well into pretty colors from touching. So like here, when I add some green, it can go here, but I wouldn't put it on top of the pink because that wouldn't be pretty. Next, I'm mixing up my pearl because pearl is not a dye-based ink but has a pigment powder instead, it needs to be well shaken first. Then I'm going to have fun liberally applying it wherever I like. It looks good on any color and it doesn't sink as much as the white at all. So it's also crazy fun to watch it play on the surface. So have a lot of fun with this. I'm going to let the inks do their thing for a while before deciding where I can add some blue-violet. Followed by some white to push that down. And what the heck, some more pearl for fun. <laughs> Periodically check on your old resin. You want it to thicken up, but if you feel it getting very warm, you want to use it soon. The heat is a sign the resin is actively curing and really setting up. Now keep in mind that every resin is different. Other brands can sit for 45 minutes in a small cup. Others may cure faster than that, and if you let them sit in a cup. Experiment with your brand if you use a different resin. Since I've got a little more time, I'll play with a bit more ink in spots that I think have gotten a little bare and a little sort of negative spacey. So, like I said, I want to kind of fill up the surface as much as possible. Now my old resin is ready. It's nice and thick. I pinch a spout into the cup and start pouring right on top of my colors. I'm being pretty random about it 
but you can get more deliberate. You can draw a picture with your little pour, write a word, a name, just have fun. Do whatever your heart moves you to do. You can overlap your lines, make dots, whatever. At the end, I have some blobs of resin left over. So I'll put those in too, cause why not? <laughs> now, when you look down on these resin lines that you've just drawn, you'll literally be able to see how they've pushed through your ink layer. Since I have a clear top in those spots, I'm going to drop pearl over it. Since the resin that I've just poured now is really thick, the pearl won't be able to sink through it. It'll literally sit on top of it. So what it's going to do is add some interest to those spots wherever they might be visible from the other side. And then with that done, I'm going to let this cure and we'll see how it turns out. Okay. I was a good patient girl and I waited the full 24 hours. So this is good and hard cured and not at all bendy, like at all, at all. Alrighty, now for the reveal. <laughs> I'm always nervous at this point. The mold is releasing. Oh, I spoke too soon. I was going to say the mold is releasing very nicely, but it's kind of. Oh no, it's okay. I thought it was stuck there. Oh, how cool is that? <laughs> I get the biggest kick out of these. All right, I had a little white here, but in a future video, I will actually show you how to deal with these to get rid of those if those bother you. But this is cool. <laughs> how neat is that? I love looking at all the shapes that get made. And then you can see the shimmer of the pearl, hopefully like right through here in particular. And then you can see it peeking through there. Oh, and again here through the pink. Oh my gosh, the pink is so neon, it's kind of cool. Yeah, I love this little spot right here. Look at that, it's got a lot of extra color kind of going on in there. It looks like carpeting in the background here, which I think is really neat. So like snakes running through your carpet. <laughs> Give this a thumbs up if you'd like to learn more ways to make bee tree art. Some that are wild and abstract, some that are just downright pretty, and some that are both. I hope you're feeling inspired to make some bee trees of your own. When you do, come show off your work in my Facebook group. We'd love to have you sharing and learning with us. Make sure to subscribe, click the bell, and select all notifications to catch every tip and trick. Thank you to all of you for watching. Thank you to my wonderful patrons who make these videos possible. May your creative nature shine. See you in a couple of days. Bye now.